welcome to another episode of Friends Food and Fun. My name is Brian Upward, I'm your host, and I'm joined here with my special guest. As always, it's Helenka. Good evening to you. Hello. So Helenka and I like to um, experiment with recipes, test things out, try them. Uh, we love eating. That's yes. one of the things we'd like to do. So I just wanted to, to uh, explain how what the show is all about. And one of the things we do is we like to find interesting recipes, maybe sometimes try our own twist and kick and that kind of thing. So we're reviewing a recipe book called Cook This, Not That. Now this is the uh, second edition, so yes. another addition to our wonderful book that we've uh, reviewed in the past. And today's recipe is oven, oven fried, fried chicken. chicken. Yes. Now, the uh, side dish that I'm going to make with this is, is my own recipe. Um, years ago I went to this restaurant called Red Devil. And one of the things okay. that they had, I think you were there too, did you? Yeah. Yes. So one of the things that they had, which I loved, and when I went back to it years later, they never had this dish again, and uh, it was uh, garlic mashed potatoes. Now the twist with it is uh, the mashed potatoes have corn, and it also has uh, green onion, and obviously uh, roasted uh, garlic. So I'm going to read out the list of ingredients of what we have to do, because we've got some chicken that we've got prepped, we've got potatoes also here. Um, I've just started them to get them to a boil because we've got a very short period of time in yes. order to whip this all together. And of course potatoes take a long time to do it. Now the potatoes are yellow flesh potatoes. I've left the skins on, of course I've cleaned them, cut them into quarters, and now they're just sitting in some water and they're going to come up to a boil. So for the mashed potatoes, I'm also going to use these lovely green onions here. Great. So we have got these. Um, I also have these wonderful heads of roasted garlic. Now Helenka and I at times have known to, have been known to actually eat a whole head of roasted garlic. I have an ugly bowl with a masher here. I've got my strainer ready to go. We also have this lovely uh, corn. This is peaches and cream whole kernel corn. Okay. So we're going to use that. I like to use canned during uh, the winter time or even frozen. Yeah. I know frozen is actually uh, usually better for certain vegetables. Well, especially nowadays. Yes. Not 20 years ago. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I'm also going to use, and this is a little carryover from the chicken, yeah. I'm going to use buttermilk right. um, in the potatoes uh, for the mashed. Oh, as well as in the chicken. Yes. Wow, so we're going to have a, um, right, that's great. Yeah. So it's going to, we're going to tie the dishes together. Okay. I've got my toaster oven, which I love, it's a convection toaster oven, heating up to 450 for the chicken. Now, for the chicken, you have to let it uh, marinate for at least 12 hours. Um, I say at least 12 hours. It says one hour, but well, if you're going to do it, it up to 12 hours. If you're going to do it, do it, it do it properly. Do it for 12 hours. Give it the flavor. Exactly. Now, in this, it's uh, buttermilk, and I also put in hot sauce. Now, they say use Frank's Red hot sauce, which I did, but I also used a little twist. I used uh, my Louisiana hot sauce as well, which so, is fabulous. Which is also really, really yes. good. Yes, we've had that before. So in here are drumsticks. Now we're going to coat the drumsticks with panko breadcrumbs. So I've got two cups of panko breadcrumbs here, and we're going to spice up the breadcrumbs, uh, and we're going to put them over the chicken. So the other things that we're going to add, oh, we've got boiling on the potatoes. I'm going to turn that down, and I'm going to put the clock on for about half an hour. So we'll keep an eye out on that. So. Um, some of the other ingredients that we need to put into our panko breadcrumbs are um, garlic salt, which I have here, and I have smoked paprika, which I love as well. This is really good on potato salad. I love that. Um, I also have the salt and the pepper, so we've got the pepper here and the salt. Yay. And it says to use cayenne pepper because there's um, uh, the hot sauce is actually made from cayenne pepper. Right. So they're trying to tie it in, but yes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use habanero. Okay. So I didn't have cayenne. I have this instead. So now I need um, to put in the other things that go in with the, uh, the panko breadcrumbs. So I think the first thing, um, everything is about halves of everything except for the, the, the cayenne, the cayenne pepper. which is uh, habanero. Habanero in this case. So okay, so this is a half a teaspoon of the smoky paprika. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And if a little bit extra goes into it, well, where are you going to fault? Me? We also need, I'm going to put in a half teaspoon of this lovely kosher, um, it's actually sea salt. So sea salt, and then garlic salt, ooh, garlic salt. Okay, so I'm going to put a half, oh, they don't fit, half teaspoon of and garlic salt to have an arrow pepper in, so that's, I'm not going to, this stuff is potent, so you don't want to use, I'm not using a half 
probably didn't even use an eighth of it. Uh, it's very potent. And then, of course, we need to do pepper. And I'm just going to eyeball that one because it's freshly ground. Okay, so let's say that's the correct measurement. It is here. And now I'm just going to stir this around. My oven has, my toaster oven has, husband. Toaster husband. <laughs> my toaster oven has heated up to the appropriate degrees. And now we're going to put it onto this lovely little pan. And here's, ooh, here's our lovely chicken. So, wet hand puts chicken in. Oh, we'll let this drip off first. And here, oh, this smells good. Smell that. Now we're cleaning your senses. Oh, that smells good. <laughs> She's breathing again. Yeah. And then the dry hand is going to put this all over. That's a good tip. The panko. Okay, so there's our first one. And then the hand goes into the bag, pulls out lovely, lovely, lovely chicken. Dry hand is going to start putting this all over it. Now, panko, in case you didn't know what that was, they're Japanese breadcrumbs. It's a finer quality of a breadcrumb. There we go. Let's make sure that's the last one. It is. Okay, so those are done. We'll put that in there. Now that our chicken is on our pan here, I'm going to put it into the toaster oven. It's heated up to 450, and we're going to leave it in the oven for about 20 minutes. So we've got about uh, 40 seconds left on the clock for the chicken. How's that for <laughs> one bit down at a time? Now the potatoes are finished, so we're going to do that in a little bit, but I want to make sure that we rescue the chicken. So what happened, uh, we've kept an eye, over, eye on it over the last 20 minutes or so, and um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't burn it. It's in a toaster oven, it's on convection. I did reduce the heat down probably for the last five to seven minutes, and I increased the amount of time, so it went up. By about five, three minutes. By about three minutes, yes. yeah. So um, just to give you an idea of how it actually works in a toaster oven. So uh, it looks good. Oh, five, four, three, it's like coming down to New Year's. Three, two, one. And the chicken is done. Okay, so I'm going to rescue the chicken. Oh, it smells, it smells good. Yes, it does. And we've got some lovely color here. Show the folks on camera. Here we go. Look at that. Some beautiful chicken. So we and have... And you never guessed it, that it hadn't been done in a fry. Yeah, that's the neat thing about it. Yeah, yeah it smells very good. Oh, I can feel the temperature. Even though these are yes. resistant. They're not totally heat resistant. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to smash the taters. Smashing taters. So we rescue the taters here. So I'm going to put this into, I'm going to get a facial out of this. So gently, you've been burning yourself. And to see, look. Yes. Isn't that lovely? Well, that's Steve. Now I'm going to take my little pet of butter and put that into the bottom of the pan. Here. So that the potatoes will melt it. Yeah. Wow. So I had, did leave it out overnight, so. That's but even point. so. Even so. Now what I'm going to do is take the potatoes, and I'm going to put them into the ugly ball. So there's our ugly ball. All right, so while that's doing its little thing, i got my masher here. We're going to put that there. I need to chop up the green onions. So we're going to chop. I'm just going to cut it into very small pieces. Good. As small as they can be. Now, do you, you use the white piece? Oh, of, always. Yes, so I am going to do that too. Yes. So this will have lots of green onion in it. Fabulous. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to put the second one in. Lots of green onion, I warned you. And garlic. Oh, oh what a lots combo. Of, yes, lots of, lots of fresh roasted garlic. Now, in case you want to know how to roast garlic, because um, maybe you haven't done that before, those at home, you take a, I'll show you, you take a head of garlic, you cut the top off of it, I pour a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper onto it, put it into the oven for about 350. In tin foil. Um, actually, no, I didn't do that this time. Oh, really? It's just open face. Okay. Yep, and it worked out really well. Of course, I used the toaster oven as well. I love my toaster oven. Yes, yes, yes. She's getting tired of me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> talking about the toaster. Your new girlfriend. <laughs> your new girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. No, talk about your mechanical sidekick. Oh, yeah, really. I have Halenka on one side. <laughs> and the toaster, and the toaster oven on, on the, the other. other. Boy. 
I got it made. Okay, so I'm going to mash up taters. Oh, lovely. Lovely. I'm going to put in some salt as I'm mashing now. So I'm gonna, nice. oh, oh, is that the Salish? No, but I'm going to use partly of this, and we're going to use the Salish okay. salt as well. So I won't use as much of that. Okay. So good point, because we decided we we're going to use salt number five, in case you're paying attention. From, from the, the salt chest. chest. So this is the Salish. This is a wonderful smoked alder sea salt. Now this one is a flaked sea salt, so I like to have the texture of, of both. So as I mash, we will continue that. And I'm going to do more mashing when I put the garlic in too. So this is going to get really mashed up. Now you don't have to add buttermilk if you don't want to, but I'm going to add up just a splash, just to add a little something to it. So here's the garlic, and this is going to be fun. So I'm going to just, these come out really easy. Um, if you let them cool after you cook them. So, here we go. And I'm going to just do a quick cut. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer Missy here a treat. Uh-oh. If she will eat it. What is it? Garlic. I don't have to be anywhere tomorrow. <laughs> That's a good thing. So I'm going to have one too. Let's try it out and see. Oh. Oh, that's amazing. If we had had these mm -hmm. as an accompaniment to our cheese episode, that would have been good. Yeah, with the stronger cheeses. With the stronger cheeses. Oh, like aged on the, on your, cheddar on your crackers or uh, the Bruxelles. Yeah. Oh, it tastes so good. Gives you an idea. Okay. Now I just want to. I'm just trying to be careful here not to cut my fingers off. Okay, so here's the garlic. We're going to put this into the bowl. Now the neat thing about this is that um, the heat of the potatoes will also heat up the garlic. Yeah. Again, and the onions. So more mashing. I'm going to add just a splash of buttermilk. I like buttermilk. We made pancakes with buttermilk. Yes, we definitely did. Okay, so maybe splash in a little bit. So this is going to make it creamy. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add in our corn. Just dump it in there. Dump, and then I'm going to add in, no more mashing. No. Now it's the delicate phase. Yes. We're going to add in our green onion. And then I have here a slotted spoon, and we just stir it in. Look at this. It sticks to the spoon. Okay, so we're pretty much done. This is a very easy dish. Um, I love this mashed potatoes. Okay, so we're going to prepare a plate for Her Majesty. In case you didn't know, that's her. And I'm going to give her a piece of chicken. Oops. I'm going to artfully place it there. Give her a big dollop of smashed <laughs> Roasted garlic potatoes. potatoes. Oh my goodness, yep. you really did. Really did, Gilma. Yes. Okay, and now she gets to do a little taste testing. Well, this might be a little difficult. Let's start with the taters. Okay. And they smell incredible. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more. And just the corn, just those few seconds. It. And it's. Uh, Making an impact. Wow. Okay, I have meat. Aha, you do indeed. Actually, looks very tender. It does. The crumbs are so crunchy. Good. And that's what you want with the. Because you want to get, recreate the taste of a, yeah. of a fried chicken. Yeah. But, do it in but the they, and there's no fat, there's just no grease, yes, no greasy aftertaste. And because you did marinate the chicken, mm -hmm. after I swallowed it, I'm getting that pleasant heat going down the throat. Excellent. Yes. Well, it looks like this was a successful review. Oh, we have a winner here. We have a winner here. Perfect. Yes. Well, thank you very much for reviewing this recipe with no me, problem. testing it out. For more episodes in our blog, please visit our website at friendsfoodfun.tv 
Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers.